Welcome everyone, and thank you all for taking the time today to join our webinar. My name is Ryan Campanile, and I'm a director in our business intelligence and analytics practice at SmartBridge. Uh, today we're gonna talk about information and analytical design, uh, design principles and best practices, and how they apply to data visualizations and dashboards. And specifically, we're gonna cover some tips and tricks for applying them in microstrategy as well. Uh, we're also going to cover why it's becoming more and more important that everyone understand and be able to apply good information design. Finally, if you have any questions during the webinar, please submit them on the form below uh, this video at smartbridge.com and we're going to respond to all your questions. So before we jump in, I wanted to start by covering a little bit of background. So most of you have seen or heard a lot about big data. You're probably all sick of hearing about big data by now. But part of uh, what's affecting uh, and part of this background is the size of data and how much growth we've had. So I can tell you, for instance, that one of the, one of the interesting facts or statistics that I heard about big data is that from the beginning of time until 2003, humans created five exabytes of digital data. But then by 2013, we were creating five exabytes of data every 10 minutes. Additionally, uh, digital data will surpass 40 zettabytes by 2020. Now, for those of you not familiar, one exabyte is a million terabytes and one zettabyte is a billion terabytes. Now, right off the bat here in this webinar, which is about good information design, I have already violated one of the principles of good information design. And that principle is avoid distorting the data and misleading the user. And I've essentially done that here because with these circles here, I've tried to give you a visual representation for how large a zettabyte is. But it's actually misleading because if I were going to draw this true to scale, that circle that represents the zettabyte would actually need to be 473 miles in diameter. So hopefully that corrects my mistake and gives you a little bit of a picture of how much data is out there and how much it's grown. 